Hello, this is Dean Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org. This short audio is a message and a clarification response to Ed Griffin that it seems unfortunately needed to be done. Mr. Griffin feels I'm attacking him. Rather, I'm simply attempting to bring light to the completely false narrative being propagated by Mr. Griffin and the upcoming event staged by him to further push this patently false narrative. Mr. Griffin states on the record that not only is the planet not warming, but is actually cooling. Why do I care about Mr. Griffin putting out this completely false narrative about the state of the climate? Here's the answer. Because his narrative completely and greatly discredits and thus harms the most critical battle of all, the fight to expose and halt the ongoing climate engineering weather warfare assault against the entire web of life. The future of my children and all children in so many ways hinges on whether or not we can successfully expose and halt the climate engineering insanity. Short of nuclear cataclysm, climate engineering is the greatest and most immediate threat we face. The entire climate science community is both afraid to speak the truth about climate engineering and or paid to lie about the issue. If the science community sees and believes that the anti-geoengineering community is putting out completely ridiculous disinformation on the state of the climate, they will never come near us. Bridges with the science community will never be built, and the battle to expose and halt climate engineering will then be lost. This outcome is not acceptable. Mr. Griffin claims to be committed to stopping climate engineering, but does this claim match his ongoing false narrative, and most recently, his actions? Some facts should be considered. Why would Mr. Griffin organize and hold an event where the top two speakers have stated publicly and on the record that climate engineering isn't happening, and that what we see in our skies, the toxic aircraft sprayed trails, are only, quote, condensation? Which, of course, is not true. Again, why would these two individuals, the so-called Lord Moncton, a title he seemed to have ordained himself with, and Tim Ball be Mr. Griffin's top two speakers? Question mark on that. Next, Ed's narrative of global cooling is exactly the narrative that the power structure and the climate engineers want the public to believe and repeat. One of the primary objectives of the temporary and highly toxic climate engineering cooldowns is to confuse the population as to the true extent of planetary warming. Why would Mr. Griffin help to sell the chemical cooldowns as, quote, natural? The paradox with the chemically nucleated cooldowns is this. These engineered events are actually further contributing to the overall warming, extreme warming, of the planet, which is scientifically and rationally beyond any doubt. Frontline film footage around the planet proves this fact. Griffin states that he and his associates, quote, believe that the planet is cooling. But should such conclusions be based on what we believe? The answer is clearly no. Such conclusions should only be based on frontline facts and film footage, both of which are readily available to any that are willing to do objective investigation. Massive rivers of thawing and flowing ice are not flowing out from ice deposits around the globe because the planet is cooling. Forests are not burning down all over the globe because the planet is cooling. Formerly frozen methane deposits are not thawing and releasing from Arctic tundra and the seabed and migrating into the atmosphere because the planet is cooling. It's because, of course, the planet is warming. Though ice deposits all over the globe are rapidly melting and thus raising sea levels, clearly, this fact is inarguable, Mr. Griffin tries to tell us that none of that's true. He states on the record that the seas are not rising, rather the land is just sinking. Ed stated that his, quote, belief that global warming is a hoax was also based on the fact that global powers have an agenda and on the fact that people are making money on global warming. Mr. Griffin's statements in this case are partially true. There are, of course, always disaster capitalists that strive to profit from calamity. But does that automatically mean the calamity is not real? 
Countless corporate and government criminals profit from wars and global conflict, but does that mean the wars and the conflicts are not real? Does that mean people are not dying in those wars and conflicts? Of course not. In Mr. Griffin's video response to a recent article I posted, he latched onto a single link in the article, a link to a study done by Carnegie Science. This link was one of almost 90 total source links and video links in the article, but unfortunately Mr. Griffin never mentioned any of the other links. Again, almost 90 in total, many of the hyperlinks were in my article post, an additional 48 articles and links were at the bottom of my post, all from numerous frontline sources. Why did Mr. Griffin try to give the impression that there was only one source link in my post? Mr. Griffin correctly stated that I had formally criticized Carnegie Science for their part in an article titled, Chemtrails Are Not Real, which was a disinformation piece designed to discredit the geoengineering reality. Because one of almost 90 source links in my expose of the upcoming Global Warming is a Hoax Ed Griffin event was also from Carnegie Science, Mr. Griffin builds a whole video around this insignificant fact. Again, with no mention of the almost 90 other source links from frontline sources. And about this single Carnegie Science link Ed so aggressively latched onto, I would say this. Let's make a comparison to National Geographic. National Geographic actually did a whole feature disinformation article on the, quote, chemtrails issue. National Geographic did what the power structure wanted them to do on this particular subject, to spin it. National Geographic was wrong for doing this, just as Carnegie Science was wrong for the same type of article they tried to spin and marginalize regarding climate engineering. But here's my point. Because National Geographic lied for the power structure on this one issue, should I then round up my hundreds of National Geographic magazines that contain volumes of valuable and verifiable information and just throw them out because of the single transgression on a single subject? One of many dozens of source links I posted in the Griffin Global Cooling Post was from Carnegie, one of almost 90. And I stand by the information in that particular article. I also stand by the information in the almost 90 other articles and video links that were in my post of the Griffin event coming in December, which again, Ed never bothered to mention all those links, let alone investigate those links. In a memo message Ed sent out, he claimed that the, quote, establishment was not happy with his global warming as a hoax event. But I would ask this, why would anyone come to that conclusion? The very goal of the climate engineers and the military industrial fossil fuel industry complex is to keep business as usual by doing everything they can to hide the imploding climate and biosphere from the public view for as long as possible. Unfortunately, Mr. Griffin, and his so-called experts are parroting the exact narrative that the climate engineers would want them to recite. Why would the quote establishment be upset about them putting out the exact narrative they would want them to repeat? And again about Griffin's experts, I'm simply challenging anyone to investigate the very in-depth information that's available on Ed's top two experts, Lord Moncton, and Tim Ball. There's a great deal of detailed information on these individuals from multiple sources and the vast majority of that information is quite damning. And again, both of Ed Griffin's top experts adamantly deny the climate engineering reality. How can Mr. Griffin be fighting climate engineering while at the same time completely discrediting the cause by featuring speakers that deny the climate engineering reality on the record, completely deny it? categorically deny it. Ed himself stated this on the record about the climate engineering issue in his article, Don't Blame the Pilots. Griffin basically said the jets we think we see spraying are not actually spraying. He went on to try and tell us that the grid patterns we see in the skies are not being sprayed in the patterns we see. Rather, the wind is just blowing the trails into those patterns. Do these explanations seem logical to anyone? A final few points. Ed claims that he has always supported me. This seems to be some sort of attempt 
by Mr. Griffin to make his followers feel that I have somehow betrayed him. This is patently false. This is a false conclusion. The only interaction I have ever had with Ed was related to the interviews I did for the What in the World and Why in the World Are They Spraying documentaries done by Michael Murphy and Barry Kalski. I made clear to Ed at that time I would not participate in the films in any way if the false global cooling narrative was pushed. It wasn't, so I tried to do my part to help the films. I was the one that actually paid out of pocket to get the films started. I paid for the first hard drives for the films, for Michael Murphy and his cinematographer. I contributed funds to Michael Murphy, which of course indirectly benefited Ed, as Ed profited from the film sales. I never asked for or wanted any profit or even reimbursement from Michael or Barry's films. I was glad to help with the effort. So I would ask Ed this, how exactly has he supported me and why would he paint such a picture? Finally, in Mr. Griffin's recently released video addressing me, he challenges me to a public debate about the true state of the climate. I would gladly accept this challenge any time, but I will, of course, not attend his disinformation event as he would like. As I've already stated, radio announcer Vinnie Eastwood already tried to arrange such a debate between myself and Tim Ball, one of Ed's top experts. I accepted, Tim Ball refused, though Ed stated he doesn't believe this. Again, his beliefs are not relevant to the facts, the facts I have just stated. My last and most important point is this. Unlike Mr. Griffin, I've never asked anyone to believe me on anything, and I never will. What I have asked is this for people to do honest and unbiased investigations of the frontline facts and the frontline film footage. This request has always applied to the climate engineering issue and the state of the climate itself. It must apply to both of these issues as the two issues cannot be separated. How can there be any legitimate discussion about the climate in any arena without first and foremost discussing the ongoing climate engineering, weather warfare, global assault. Here's the answer. There can't be any legitimate discussion about the climate without addressing the geoengineering insanity, first and foremost. My final statement, please don't believe me, again, about anything. All I have ever asked for people to do is actually investigate the frontline facts without bias, without ideology, without preconception. That's all I ask now. The fight for the greater good requires all of us. Credibility matters in this fight. Make your voice heard. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org.